Well, blessed Thursday to you as we come to your daily encouragement. And we are chapter four of uh, Life Together by Dietrich Bonhoeffer. And the section is called Ministry. We've already talked about the life apart and the life together. And now we're going to talk about how ministry, the ministry of the gospel, fits into all of these things. And the first paragraph writes, There arose a reasoning among them, which of them should be the greatest. And this is from Luke 9, 46. We know who it is that sows this thought in the Christian community. But perhaps we do not bear in mind enough that no Christian community ever comes together without this thought immediately emerging as a seed of discord. Thus, at the very beginning of Christian fellowship, there is an endangered and invisible, often unconscious, life or death contest. There arose a reasoning among him, and this is enough to destroy a fellowship. And what is that reasoning among us? Who is the greatest? Who has the most prominence in church? Now, rarely have I seen anybody wanting to have a total takeover of a church or a fellowship. Usually we always have some realms or places that we feel that we have some ownership of things. And sometimes for me, as a clergy or someone who's called to be in ministry, Sometimes it's when I touch those areas that we start to have some conflict. Or, dare I say, when times change and the needs are slightly different, that's when we start to have a lot of discord. But Dietrich Bonhoeffer traces it all the way back to the discord that we have among each other as fellow believers, if not the discord we have with other people in this world, not e even nature itself. We are told that we are at a discord, and that starts at the very beginning of the Garden of Eden, and when Adam and Eve, quote-unquote, sinned and fell short of the glory of God and were kicked out of the Garden. Now, I said, quote-unquote, sin. Some have a very robust understanding of sin that starts with Adam and Eve, and um, Lutheranism is part of that tradition. Others, such as our friends in the Eastern Orthodox Church, don't quite label that sin, although they label it misplaced um, looking, or should I say, putting others first rather than God first. Now, I would label that sin, and sometimes we get into what we'd call some, are you going to call that sin or that sin or not that sin? You, we start to label things that are more convenient for us. Regardless of what it is, this reason or this discord or this desire to do things that are not in their proper order comes by very easily. And sometimes it doesn't take much to nudge a person along the wrong track. And unfortunately, you wish it would be easier to nudge someone along the right track. But we are on the understanding, and this is something I always like to tell my first confirmation students, we start out not at an equilibrium. We don't start out as a zero. We start out, if we go by integers, with minuses. Already a tendency to do the wrong thing. Already a tendency to not get along with each other. Already a tendency not to let anybody, for that matter, infringe on our rights, or even if they are attempted, even if we voted for them in some way or manner, to lord over oneself. And that is what we're called to do as Christians. We are called to uh, look upon one another. Now, the way our denomination puts it together, at least, is the interpersonal, or should I say, interdependent on each other, to make sure that we are supporting each other's lives, that we are not going about this on our own. In fact, that's one of the things we're cautioned against in so many ways. Just even as I've told you, you might be alone and just with you in the Bible, but with you in the Bible, you are already in community with one another. We do not go into this salvation just by ourselves. Even if we might have an individual baptism, it is recognized by a community in which the baptism takes place. It might be an immediate community of people. It takes another person to baptize another. And we many times recognize as this a move of the community together. 
We are given a family, and sometimes that's the family we want to be in, and sometimes it's maybe not so much the family we want to be in. But either case, we are called into a community and need to remember that we are not in this alone. God bless you today. We trust that these continue to be words of encouragement. Take care. God bless.